Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice stuff to join us. He's the outstanding TV play-by-play guy for the Timberwolves, making his national debut tonight. Kings and Warriors, excuse me, Kings and Mavericks, pardon me, on TNT. Michael Grady. How are you, Michael? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? Uh, we're we're great. Thanks for coming on with us. Uh, mm-hmm. um, can we count on you to educate fans around the country on what an amazing season Domas is having because he can't get the respect he deserves, Michael? Uh, you know, it really speaks to just how um, how many great performances we've seen around the NBA this season. Um, because even from a Kings fan perspective, uh, you to- totally feel like Domas should have been in the All-Star game. Totally feel like he should be getting more attention for the things that he's accomplishing um, this year. And then when you look at what Jokic is doing and you look at his numbers, you look at Luka Doncic and his numbers as he enters this game tonight. Giannis out with Milwaukee. Um, there are all these tremendous performances that we're seeing an individual um, uh, excellence that we're seeing around the league that um, it's a hundred percent frustrating, especially when, uh, you know, for me personally coming from small markets, when, you know, the teams that I used to cover would be doing some spectacular things. And then it would be kind of swept under the rug because these major markets or, or, or teams or players with more cachet would get, would, would have all the talking points. So, I think tonight is a great opportunity on this stage in a, in a massive game, two teams with identical records, where uh, another strong performance from Demonis Sabonis on this platform would go a long way in, in, in at least getting people to understand how difficult it is to do what he's able to do night in and night out. There we go. Yeah, that's it. There right we there. Go. Michael, I, I need I need that monologue on the broadcast tonight, man. I, I need that tonight, man. <laughs> hey, it's your boy Drapes here, man. Excited to have My you in God. town for this big game. Uh, you know, when you look at the Western Conference, and I know you're very familiar with it, having done you know, you know, doing uh play by play for the Timberwolves. How does it stack up to you, man? When you look at, you know, the the Clippers falling off a little bit, but now come here come the Mavericks, the Kings, the Pelicans. I mean, this is, you know, they talk about the wild, wild west, and this is as wild as it's been for a while. You know, what's funny, the teams that are, Drake, the teams that are uh, that are slipping are still scary. Yeah, and this is what makes the Western Conference in this postseason a hundred percent must see TV. You don't want to miss a game. The drama, the theater that we're going to see with each matchup over the course of this Western Conference playoff run. Forget the East. The West is crazy. So going back to that original point about the teams that are slipping are are, are, are still scared. The Clippers have fallen off a little bit. Anybody want to see Kawhi in round one? Anybody enthused about yeah. the possibility of matching up with them in round one? Right now it looks like the Pelicans. Um, no, that's still scary. Uh, the who else is slipping? Phoenix just lost to San Antonio last night without Victor Wimbanyama. Man, yeah. Phoenix is falling off. Anybody want to see Katie and Book in round one? Anybody oh, excited yeah. about that yeah. first round series? Even with, even with Golden State, the way they're the, the way they may not even make the play-in tournament. Uh, if they make the play-in tournament, who wants to see Steph Curry in a do-or-die game? Right. So it, it's like every last one of these teams that are fighting for playoff position, fighting for their playing lives. Um, they're scary. They're desperate. And these final weeks of the regular season are going to be uh, spectacular. The teams that we have at the top, minus Denver, who's number one right now, Oklahoma City and you know Minnesota, they've been doing amazing things this season. But still, they're going to have their doubters once the bright lights of the postseason comes on because of their lack of collective uh, postseason experience together. So how will they handle the limelight when they're a favorite in round one, potentially against the Dallas Mavericks, potentially against the Suns or, you know, or, or the Lakers? Uh, so it's just so many storylines. And I, I just have never, never seen either conference this deep, um, yeah. 11 deep. <laughs> yeah, 11 D. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Grady with us. He's got the call tonight on TNT. Uh, Kings and the Mavs. At you being the T Wolves play by play guy, Michael, how impressed were you by what the Kings did that Friday a couple weeks ago when they went into Minnesota without De'Aaron Fox 
and they were able to come away with that victory when Malik Monk went nuts on the T-Wolves in, in what was a really big game for both teams. Yeah, you know, Sacramento, again, being another one of those teams that, you know, uh, if you want to, if you're excited about seeing them in the postseason, something might be wrong with you. Um, uh, given the way De'Aaron Fox is playing this season, another guy, we talk about Sabonis being under the radar. What De'Aaron Fox is doing is under the radar as well um, in a lot of NBA circles, and he should be applauded for it. Uh, Malik Monk is the sixth man of the year, and that game where he dropped 39, where he had, you know, a slow start in that game. And you're thinking from a, from a Timberwolves perspective, okay, if he, if he stays pedestrian, you're okay. And then all of a sudden he goes nuclear and, you know, the basket is as wide as the ocean. So he's, he is incredibly fun to watch um, from a defender standpoint. He's incredibly tough to stop. And he just makes this, this Sacramento squad more dynamic. The one thing I'm curious about, um, uh, and, and I'll turn it to you, Drake, the, the, the defense for Sacramento. Um, I remember talking to Mike Brown about this a couple of times, um, you know, this season and that, they know that they have a tremendous offense, and if the defense can just catch up just a little, it doesn't have to be spectacular. But if defense can rise, you know, a little bit, then you can do some. Then they could potentially do some some really special things. And whether it's Keon Ellis or whatever it is, kind of defensively, um, we're seeing them lock lock in a little bit more. And I, I think that's going to make them even more dangerous as dangerous as we get into this critical part of the regular season. Michael Grady joining us. And, and Michael, you talk about the Kings defense, man. And, and it really has improved. Right now, they're 14th in the NBA in defensive rating. You know, all season long, we've been, just been talking about, hey, if this team could just be middle of the pack, top 15, yeah. you know, great things will happen. And you're seeing it right now. And, and I point to Keon Ellis. And, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, what happens is the coach can preach things and say, guys, we got to do this. But you need a player to actually go out there and do it. And I feel like what Keon's done is sort of, you know, rubbing off on everybody else. You know how it is. When one guy is yeah. getting after it, it sort of, you know, motivates the rest of the team to do that as well. It, it, it's contagious. And you need irritators like that on your roster. And um, I, I think it's really fun to see. And going back to that Minnesota game, you know, Malik Monk obviously went crazy offensively. But Keon did so many little things in that game as a disruptor and, and, and mucking up the flow for the, uh, for the Timberwolves backcourt that he was 100% noticeable in that game. So from my standpoint, it's no, from, from the outside looking in, it's no surprise kind of the impact that he's had. Because, again, once you start to get easy baskets and you make plays and get stops, like, I, you know, the NBA is just all about going 120, 100, we're seeing a lot of 120, 130, whatever it may be. Yeah. Numbers are going down a little bit slightly. Um, but defense is fun. Like, can we make defense fun again? Can we, <laughs> can we, make, can we enjoy getting stops, um, uh, making great defensive plays? You know, I've seen, I've seen it in Minnesota with the number one defensive rating, but seeing what, you know, Sacramento is starting to do and seeing some, you know, Oklahoma City, they'll get after you defensively Houston is one of the hottest teams if not the hottest team or they're the hottest team in the league right now after what happened with Boston last night um Houston gets after it defensively um I, I love talking about defense and um and seeing selfless guys like Keon Ellis have an impact on their respective team Michael Grady with us he's got the call tonight on TNT and Michael to that point uh the Kings last Wednesday I believe it was they beat uh, Toronto and Mike Brown after the game was trying. He was asked to compare Keon to any outstanding defender he's seen before, and he really struggled. It was incredible. He was. He said, "I, I'm having a hard time with that." When he, in some ways, and he started to say, it, it, "He may be the best we've seen in some areas," and he didn't quite go there. But he's really, really impressed. It's amazing how impressed Mike Brown is with Keon Ellis uh, to this point. But I want to ask you, as far as tonight goes, what's the first thing that jumps out to you about this matchup between the Kings and the Mavericks? Well, I want to see one. Number one, selfishly, I want to see everybody play, and I think yeah. you know, it being a back to back for both teams, I think if everybody is able to participate, I think it underscores the significance of this game. If the Kings win, they lock in the regular season series um, against the Mavericks, and that gives them an edge in terms of a in terms of a tiebreaker. If the Mavericks get a win, 
They, of course, face, face each other later in the week. If the Mavericks get another win there, then it opens up the conference record tiebreaker yeah. if the Kings and the Mavericks happen to have the same record, which is significant because we're not talking about two teams that are two, three, or four in the West. We're talking six, seven, eight. So these tiebreakers and the opportunity to get out of the play-in and give yourself almost a week of rest before the bright lights of the postseason gets underway is massive. No one wants to go through that, okay, all right, we got to play in this 7-8 game, and if we lose this, then we got to play another game to hopefully get into the play in, playoffs as an eight seed in these kind of high-pressure do-or-die games. And plus, you're losing rest. You know, you got guys with, with bumps and bruises. Everybody does at this point um, uh, in the NBA season. So to be able to secure a six seed and to be able to rest and watch these other teams play in these these stressful seven, eight, nine, ten playing games um, is just you, you just can't put a price tag on that. So for me, I, I just I just want to see who wants it more. You know, I want to yeah. see a show. I want I want to see the guys go out there and play at a high level. And it's 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 late March, and the playoffs don't start until mid April. But this is almost a mini playoff game. Mm-hmm. And the Mavericks have been one of the hotter hotter teams in the league. Uh, the Kings are of course tough at home. And the tempo with which they play with, the way that Savonis is playing, De'Aaron Fox, Monk off the bench, the shooting from uh, Keegan Murray, uh, it's not going to be an easy game either way. And so I'm just I'm just ready to buckle up for a fun one tonight. Yeah, hopefully Luca plays tonight. Like you said, I want to see these guys at full strength too. He's uh, questionable with a left Achilles soreness. Michael, my final question, you know, uh, we've talked a lot about the Kings, obviously our squad here, but what is it that the Mavs have been doing lately that has led them to, you know, making a playoff push and, and playing better basketball as of late? Yeah, you know, the, the Kings haven't seen this iteration of the Dallas yeah. Mavericks. You know, when they saw each other, saw them, for the, you know, the last time, uh, the Mavericks are coming off of a back-to-back where Luka Doncic had just scored 73 points um, against Atlanta, speaking of no defense. Um, and so the this is their first time seeing them with Daniel Gafford, who's been an absolute difference maker, uh, with P.J. Washington in the starting lineup. And if they have their starting five that they've had out there the last handful of outings with Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, P.J. Washington – um, Derek Jones um, and uh, and Gafford in the middle. Uh, that starting five is undefeated. So they found the right mix um, of guys and the right flow and lively the second coming off coming off the bench. Um, they're just tough and the chemistry between Tyree Irving and Luka Doncic and understanding and trusting each other and your turn, okay, my turn, that whole thing. And they make life easy for their bigs. All their bigs are, are, are shooting an incredible percentage from the floor because they're just catching lobs or cleaning up the glass. So um, they have just really been, really been clicking and, and turning it on um, at the right time. And um, we'll see if, if they are able to get after it defensively or how they do in transition, transition defense against the Sacramento squad. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a slug fest. Mavericks are playing at a high level. And I think it just sets up uh, for a terrific matchup. There's really no advantage other than the Kings being at home. Both teams are on the second half of a back-to-back and I, I can't wait for it. Michael Grady, have a great call. Thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you both. Take care, guys. All right, man. See you soon. All right, bro. Yeah. When we come back, tell you why a do 